Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about member initializer lists. So this has to do with how we initialize our objects when we create them in C++. And this really is a specific topic, member initializer lists. That's a little bit different than just initializer lists because we're working with member variables. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at an example here in some code. So what I've got here on the left side here is a vector 3f data structure here. And I've got the constructor here and some values here, 1, 2, and 3, just random values chosen to initialize x, y, and z, which are the member variables publicly available in this class. And I have here at lines 15 through 18 an operator overload so that I can easily do a output of my object here through the output stream. And if you want to check out the operator overloading video, that's the previous lesson in this uh, playlist, so you can go ahead and check that out. All right, so what's going on when we actually construct an object? Well, I've got an example here on the right side. And basically when I construct an object, I have to allocate some room for x, for y, and for z. And not only that, but while the object's being constructed, it's being laid out, well, pretty much as I have it here. So four bytes for Z, four bytes for Y, and again, four bytes for X. But again, we're still not done once I have created this object because, well, it's enough that we have the memory there, but now I need to do this process of finding X and assigning a value of 1.0, finding Y, assigning value of 2.0, and doing the same thing for Z. So for each of these, I have to, again, assign these values as shown here. So when we create an object in C++, we have to go through these steps here. First, constructing the object, that means allocating some memory, and then assigning some member variables. So for example, again, 3.0 would be something that I have to assign here to the member variable, and that's an extra step. But wouldn't it be nice if just when I was constructing this object, if I could just say, hey, as soon as we construct you, put in 1.0 into memory. And that's the idea with member initializer lists. So allow me to show you syntactically what that is. So for now, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and comment out what we have here so that you can see it, can, it goes away. And it's as simple as a comma separated list after a colon with each of our member variables here, and I can just assign a value as shown here. So if I go ahead and recompile this, and if I run this code, again, you'll see in the bottom left corner, one, two, three, our object is exactly the same here as was previously done. And this cleans up our code quite a bit in the sense that, well, if you have an object where you have to construct a bunch of things, you just don't have to go through this uh, step here of assigning them one by one by one. Now for primitive types, this isn't very interesting as far as a performance standpoint, but if I was to construct, say, billions of these objects and maybe there were more interesting things happening here, like constructing strings, that would perhaps save us time or even redundant calls to instructors for these variables. So we do want to use member initializer lists to hopefully, or in most cases where we're not just using primitive types, uh, improve performance. So if you'd like to take a little bit more look at how this affects performance, I'm on the ISO CPP page, and you could go ahead and read a little bit about should my constructors use initializer lists or assignment. And again, just from the phrasing of this question, assignment implies that there is some additional step that is taken here when we are creating uh, objects here. So you can read about a few of these different things here um, for initializers. Now, one thing that I do want to show you, though, that is interesting is, again, to think about, well, if I have this vector 3f here on the right side, I am laying out these different variables, x, y, and z, in memory. And they might be padded in different ways and aligned in different ways, but in general, the order x, y, and z, which I've stated here, is what the compiler is going to uphold. So what happens if I mix these up? And let's say I do x, uh, z, and y here. And let's go ahead and recall that my result was one, two, three here. And let's see if I go ahead and compile and I run. Well, let's see, I get three for X, for Z, I got two, for Y, I got one. So looks like it's okay there. Okay, seems to have worked, but let's go ahead and try something a little bit funky. Like what if we have to, for instance, do y with x's value here. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Well, it does compile. And if I run it, well, it looks like I get for y's value 
a 3. It, X's value was also set to 3, and Z's value was set to 2. Hmm, seems like uh, no problem there. Uh, but what if I made Y's value Z here? Okay, so let's go ahead and just run through and enumerate this process and eventually see if the order matters here. And this time when I run it, well, let me go ahead and move this up just so you can see, I get something pretty wild here. <laughs> I do get X as a value of three. So this will be initialized first. And then my Y variable is actually what's going to be initialized next here, the layout that it is put in. But Y's value is based off of Z, which hasn't been initialized. Um, okay, so what if I switch the order around here in my initializer list here? And I do Z and 2.0F, or just some other value, and I try to run this again. And well, again, oops, it looks like the order here doesn't quite uh, matter here um, as far as how I initialize things here. The order that really matters is the order that things are laid out here in memory. So I could try to, for instance, fix this, for instance, by putting uh, my float Z here in front here. And then I could run this and well, now things are sort of working, but I think you get the point here that, well, now my layout here for this data structure is messed up. So I just wanted to show you how you can check things. So here's the rule of thumb. The order that you lay out the things in memory here, X, Y, and Z, you should also lay out in your member initializer list with X, Y, and Z in this particular order. And again, there has to be some sort of order here. So we go by the order of the things here in memory. And so let me just go ahead and recompile this because you could run into situations where maybe there's some dependency or ordering that matters. For instance, you might have an object that depends on some other object being instantiated. Okay, In this case, for inheritance, this can sometimes be important, which we'll talk about in future lessons. All right, so the last thing I want to do before we wrap this up is actually just move this vector 3f into its own file so that you can see how that works with the actual uh, constructor here. So let's go ahead and split this uh, source code up, and I'm just going to do vector 3f, and let's go ahead and do a uh, HBP file, and let me go ahead and do a um, vertical split, and we'll go ahead and move this class over here. And this is a pretty uh, simple class, but we still want to uh, keep practicing as we're doing in this uh, series, put in our header guards. So if not defined, vector 3f, hpp, something like that. And then I would define the symbol. And then go ahead and end if here. And again, we have our interface and our implementation we would want to separate out here. So let's go ahead and uh, include the vector 3f.hpp uh, file. Make sure that we have access to it. So when we uh, call this uh, function here that we've overloaded, we can print out our vector. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this stuff because we don't need it. And let's go ahead and write our implementation file, which will be vector 3fcpp, which includes the vector 3fhpp so that we know about the actual implementation. And we need our constructor here, vector 3f. And well, what does our constructor do here? Well, let's get rid of uh, these things here, put a semicolon, and I need to recompile, include vector 3f cpp. And oops, looks like we got some errors here because it's saying something was previously defined. Okay, so let's see exactly what that error is. If I move this up here, and it looks like it's complaining a little bit about this uh, stuff that we have here. OK, so we actually have to be a little bit careful about where we are initializing our values. Does it go into the interface or the implementation? So let's go ahead and uh, move this down here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this here because, again, this is just our interface for the uh, users to see. So X, let's give a value here, Y, and Z here. 3.0 F. All right, and I'll go ahead and rebuild this. And again, now we can see uh, our example works as expected. So again, just being really careful. This is something I see folks uh, struggle with here, just 
at least when they're starting, you'll get weird compiler errors. But again, to make sure that any implementation detail where you're doing actual work generally goes into your CPP file most of the time as a rule of thumb. And all the folks who are using our header libraries need to know is that there is some constructor and then you can figure out what this uh, interface is. Now, the last thing I want to fix just because it's bothering me a little bit as somebody who's written many uh, vector libraries is I would probably just initialize these all to zero. Um, so for correctness, but for the sake of seeing in our example what the different uh, values are and how they are ordered and why we need to make sure that we initialize things in order or in general keep them in this order as they are laid out as the member variables uh, I change those values so just to be clear there so here's a working example for you to study try out and work out on your own all right folks so I hope that was a helpful lesson on member initializer lists I think the syntax is sometimes a little bit scary to folks but this was a new feature implemented in modern C++ so C++ 11 and beyond and it's something you're going to see in your code bases and something that can make it a little bit more efficient when you are creating your objects so if you've enjoyed this lesson if you've learned a cool trick or this has been just helpful go ahead and like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next lesson